everyone, welcome back to my channel. You know, it's that time of the year again where there are a lot of questions amongst architectural students asking what software should I learn? At what time during the school year should I learn software? Is it like a mandatory thing to learn Revit? Do I have to learn, you know, Photoshop and InDesign at like the start of the school year? And so, you know, all these questions bubbling up. And today I thought I would give this brief introduction of what kind of software is used, you know, in architectural schools and also in the industry. I have divided the software used into different categories and I'll be covering most of the common ones used in the industry and also in architectural schools. So there might be more software that can be categorized into the categories, but yeah, I'll just be covering the most common ones to give you like a brief idea. First off, we have diagramming software. In architecture, usually you have to make a lot of indicative diagrams to show your thought processes, and sometimes you need to use these diagrams to showcase your abstract ideas as well. While you can do like hand sketches and hand drawings, there are also a variety of digital software that can help you digitalize your ideas. First off, we have Photoshop. I think Photoshop is definitely the most wide used software in the Adobe suite because people in architecture use it but people other than architecture like graphic design and interior design people use it as well because it has such a strong background and strong properties for post-production you know like rendering photos rendering nice images but it also has some of the basic qualities of uh, and functions of making conceptual sketches conceptual maps conceptual collages which can also help bring across your ideas visually really easily and in this category we have illustrator so illustrator helps more with lines and shapes and the vector works kind of things more than photoshop because in photoshop you want to draw a line it's kind of hard you usually use like a brush or something but you know in illustrator you can then export those diagrams into the pdf or dwg and things like that and import them into photoshop for further editing so it's more a diagrammatic software where you can showcase maybe your thought processes or you know showcase maybe like a flow diagram or a very technical research program that you've done you know you can put that into illustrator and make that into a diagram to showcase your ideas third on this list might not be that widespread because i think it's only available on apple um so it's procreate uh, i have an ipad so i use procreate to do a lot of you know artistic things um especially like architectural drawings you know post-production and if you have like an apple pencil it also comes really easily you can draw and sketch really easily whereas if you are using photoshop illustrator you can still draw but i think you need another drawing tablet and procreate is pretty good but it is um, not a free software so you do have to pay Moving on to the second category, it is 2D drawing software. So by 2D drawing software, I meant 2D plans, 2D sections, 2D elevations. And I've only come across two software that are more well known. And the first one is AutoCAD. So AutoCAD is, I think, the most well known 2D drawing software. You have to enter commands though. So if you want to improve your skill set in 2D drawings, um, and also a lot of firms use this software as well, then you can try maybe memorizing more of these commands because it would increase the efficiency of your work so much. Second is Vectorworks. I just recently learned Vectorworks because my firm uses Vectorworks and it's also a pretty good software. I think it's easier to pick up than AutoCAD, but I think Vectorworks is generally for smaller scale projects, while AutoCAD can actually, you know, draw really big scale projects on it. And that's why it's so much more used in the world because bigger firms who design bigger projects need AutoCAD to draw bigger plans. Moving on to the third category is 3D modeling software. So it's about building models. There are quite a lot in the industry and different firms usually use like different software, but I'm going to talk about the most common ones. And the first one I'm going to go talk about is SketchUp. So SketchUp is really easy to kind of learn. It's pretty intuitive. And during my first year, our school actually has a project which requires us to learn SketchUp and it's seen as like a mandatory skill. Although many firms um, do not really use SketchUp that much, but I think it's easy to pick up like a first 3D modeling software for first years. And it would be a pretty good skill to have as well. Second, we have Rhino. So Rhino is definitely a much more powerful software than 
SketchUp. You can use it to build like curves and you know much more organic shapes and design as well. Similar to AutoCAD, you have to input the command for Rhino. And although it is a very powerful software, you do have to know the commands in order to be able to carry out the function. And sometimes I find that really hard as well because even with like the commands, there are like a multitude of ways you can approach like the same model like the way you do it might be different from the person next to you doing the same model and sometimes you struggle quite a lot with the commands and like the chronological orders of placing the commands third on the list we have grasshopper i haven't personally used grasshopper but i've seen some of my friends use it and it's basically a lot of coding to make the organic structures or the structures that you want that isn't necessarily already like a back ground property in like rhino it's like a plugin for rhino and i've seen my friends create like such organic and massive structures based on their coding i know a lot of firms use this nowadays especially you know like um, tech driven firms like fosters so i think if you want to go into fosters and work there one day then grasshopper may be like a mandatory skill Fourth on the list is Revit. I have just started using Revit now, like started to learn about Revit and start using Revit. And I, I'm just so amazed by it. It's just so powerful. I think it's also a software for structural engineers as well. So if you're doing technical detailing, it really helps a lot because for example, I was doing like gutters the other day and usually, you know, in Rhino, maybe in SketchUp, you have to draw the shape and then you have to extrude it and things like that. But in Revit, you just have to click one button and like click the roof and then all the gutters would be applied and it just blows my mind away. And I think now a lot of firms are looking for candidates that are skilled in Revit because a lot of firms use Revit nowadays because it's such a powerful software in terms of, you know, 2D drawing. And then you can also see it in a 3D view. And also, you know, there it's such a strong structural and technical drawing software as well. So it's like all in one. And I think Revit is the future, definitely. Fifth on the list is a software that may not be that widespread, but I do know some firms that use this and it is Blender. So Blender has some quite nice rendering properties and it is quite convenient in terms of massing. Some firms do like aerial scans and drone scans of the site and they can import like the 3D scans into Blender and then build like sketch models from it. So it's actually quite a fast way to, you know, have the 3D visualization of the site and also, you know, put massing on it. Number four in category is rendering software. So I have written quite many rendering software down to you know tell you guys, but because I haven't really used a lot of them, it's just I've heard that they're really popular and a lot of people do use them. So first up, we have Blender, which is also like a nice rendering software that I talked about before. And then there is Lumion, there's Enscape, there's Maya, and there's Unreal Engine. I think there might be even more because like um, it depends on what kind of style you want to generate and different software offers different styles. I used SketchUp as my 3D modeling software when I was in uni and I used Enscape as my rendering software because it's a plugin for SketchUp and it's just amazing because it's like so fast and everything. It's not like the best rendering software in my opinion but I think in terms of time wise if you're under time attack it actually produces pretty nice images. Unreal Engine is really powerful because you know a lot of games um, that you play maybe on your PS4 or you know like on your laptop is actually run by Unreal Engine and they, I think it's also available to be able to see in VR and some firms might offer that service as in like allowing clients to wear the VR headset and walk around and I think some firms would use Unreal Engine to power their models and you know create that kind of realistic texture for the design. Number five and this is the last category I have here is compilation software. So when you compile your portfolio together I really use InDesign. I do know a lot of friends use PowerPoint because it's fast and things like that but I think in terms of being professional and the image qualities and you know working with a grid, InDesign is the way to go. PowerPoint may be fast if you're doing like a presentation or it's like a time attack project where you have maybe like just one week or like a few hours but if you are putting together a professional portfolio it gives you a lot more you know, services in terms of visual impact in InDesign.
So about the cost of all these softwares, I do know that Adobe Suite and some other, you know, AutoCAD things like that is actually a paid subscription but if you are a student sometimes they offer to you for free or at a discounted price you can also check with your school sometimes they have a license where you can use freely as a student but if not then that part of payment might be quite a lot and you might have to save up more for this because these kind of software are kind of deemed mandatory in architecture school and also in the industry and if you have that skill set, it's definitely a very valuable thing when you're applying to jobs or you're not even in architecture. Sometimes when you're in graphic design or interior design, you still use Photoshop or you still draw plans and sections. And it's very valuable skill set to have as well. So the video ends here today. I hope you enjoy it. It's more compact. It's more information packed and although it's not like diving deep into detail, I hope it gives you like an oversight of all the software. Um, not all, but most of the software used. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!